Okay guys, today I'm going to show you how you can use conditional formatting within Microsoft Excel. It's actually a really straightforward process. There's lots of different intricate things that you can do though, but we're going to start with the basics and then work our way through some of these options. So we're going to start right here. This is basically when you're dealing with numbers. So in this particular example here, we've got a list of names and a load of test scores. Okay. Now we obviously have a pass rate of anything above 70 and a fail rate of anything less than 70 or 69 in this case here. So what we want to do is we want to highlight these numbers and we're going to head over to the home tab. We're going to go over to where it says conditional formatting. Give that little drop down a menu. Here you have lots of options. We're just going to focus on the first ones here, which is to highlight cells based on rules. OK, and you have greater than, less than, and these are the two that we're going to use. You also have other options here, such as between or equal to, text that contains, date occurring and duplicate values. Each of these are fantastic for their own use cases. But in the case of our example here, where we want to see you know we want to highlight essentially any person who has a test score greater than 70 or less than 70 right so in this case we're going to click on greater than and then we're going to in this little box right here that pops up we're going to type 70 because that's what we want and then we're going to highlight this as green so anything that is greater than 70 is going to highlight in green and we're going to click OK now from our area over here you'll notice that Chris has a score of 70 but it hasn't highlighted but we do know that that should actually be a pass this is because of that rule that we've just used which is greater than 70 it's not equal to and greater than it is just greater than so in order for us to actually get a true representation of this it would be greater than 69 so if I undo using control Z here we go back over to the home tab to the conditional formatting this time highlight cell rules greater than give that a click and then this time we're going to type 69 so it's going to highlight everything that is over 69 we're going to change this into green because it's a pass and we're going to click OK. You'll now note that Chris has been highlighted as green. OK, fantastic. Next on the list is we're going to highlight these cells once again, and this time we're going to go to the Home tab, Conditional Formatting, Highlight Cell Rules. This time it's less than, and we're going to go less than 70. OK, so 69 or lower is essentially going to be our fail rate. And then we want it to be highlighted red, which you can see here, and we're going to click OK. So now we have a very manual way of highlighting the test scores based on their pass rates. Okay, 70 is a pass, 69 or lower would be a fail, right? But obviously we have to target it slightly differently based on the logic that we're using. So if it is to be greater than um, 70 as a pass, well, we have to be uh, essentially putting down it is greater than 69 because 70 would be a pass. And likewise, when we are looking for highlighting the failed grades, well, in that case, it has to be lower than 70. So it would be less than 70, meaning that 69 or lower is essentially going to be flagged up as red. Now, the question is, how do you do this in a more dynamic way? Well, what you can do is highlight these areas right here, for example, head over to the home tab, go over to conditional formatting, go to the highlight cell rules. This time we'll click on greater than this time where, it no, where you would normally type in the actual numbers here. We can go ahead and actually select this cell right here, which is J4 in my case. And you can see that it comes into our little area right here. What that's going to do is it's going to use that cell number as our grade for highlighting what should be a pass or should be a fail, right? And you'll notice that we've got the dollar signs in here as well. These are basically anchors that basically mean that as we kind of copy this cell formula or format down or up or across various different cells and columns, well, it actually still anchors in on cell J4. So it's very important that we have those dollar signs in there. And in this particular case, we want to go green and we're going to click OK. And you'll note again, Chris has not been highlighted here um, as passing, even though he's got a score of 70. That's because the pass is greater than 70. But actually, if we go ahead and change this to 69, press enter, you'll note that Chris will now turn green. And of course, our fail number here needs to be 70 because anything less than 70 would be a fail. So again, we'll highlight all of our cells. We'll go over to the home tab. We'll go to conditional formatting and then we'll come on down to these uh, highlight cell rules and we'll go less than and we'll select this cell here, J5. It will come in here with those anchor points. We'll highlight this as red um, and then we'll go ahead and click OK. Now we've got the ability to change what the path pass rate would be and it would dynamically change what gets highlighted. For example, if our pass rate is now, you know, anything that is greater than, let's say, 75, we would put 74 here. 
and it will highlight everything that is essentially a pass. Likewise, over this side, we'd put 75 for our fail, and it will now change the highlighting according to the pass and fail rates, uh, at least on those score grades. Okay, so that's how you would work with numbers in a really kind of basic way. Okay, you'll be able to use conditional formatting to highlight greater than cells, uh, less than cells, um, in between. So if you wanted it be between two different numbers, you could do that. Or if it had to equal a very specific thing, you could do that as well. What about if you were dealing with text? Well, if we come over to my second sheet here, I've got a list of different types of videos that I've created, right? Um, so Excel videos, Word videos, Power Automate videos, and so forth. The days of the week, uh, the dates, the times, the names of the videos, and even the URL. URLs. Now, working with text is very similar to working with numbers, except this time you have to think slightly differently. Let's say, for example, I wanted to highlight every single uh, cell that actually contains a URL. In that, I would highlight these cells right here, for example, and I'd go over to the Home tab, go to the Conditional Formatting. I'm going to highlight Cell Rules, and I'm going to come down and it says um, text that contains. Okay, now here you can see that it's going to highlight the very first cell up here. Okay, that is the text that it's going to put in. If I delete that off, what we want to do is we just want to use something that would be contained within all of the URLs. This can be www. if it was there, um, but in my particular case, I use HTTPS, right? So HTTP. S, and I can use that to highlight all the cells. I can then go, uh, go down here and find a green if I want it to be green, it could be yellow if I want it to be yellow, or red if I want it to be red. In this particular case, I would use it as a green because once I've completed the video and I've uploaded it to YouTube and I put the URL in here, I want a big green box to say I've done that. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Fantastic. So now I've highlighted all the text that contains HTTPS. So what about text over this side? What if I wanted to highlight everything that contained the word Excel? We'll go over to the Home tab. We'll go over to Conditional Formatting. We'll go to Highlight Cells that contain text, and it's going to be Excel. Excel would be green, so I'm going to leave that there. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go to Conditional Formatting. I'm going to go down to Highlight Cell Rules, Text that contains. This time, I'm going to go ahead and click on Word. Now, I don't want Word to go red. I'd like it to be blue. So for that, I'm going to go all the way down to where it says custom format. If I click that, we're going to get the formatting options. This essentially allows you to format it however you'd see fit. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically change the font color here uh, into a dark blue. I'm going to use this blue right down here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to a fill and I'm going to choose the fill color to be a lighter blue, this one here. Now, if I click OK, you can see here that it's now highlighted word in blue. And I can go ahead and click OK. If I wanted to adjust that, I could adjust that. Again, I'll do the same thing again one more time. This time I'm going to go for Power BI. Okay, so if I come into here and I go to text uh, that contains, click that. This time I'm going to go in and I'm going to go Power BI. Now, this obviously does not come up necessarily if I don't have Power BI listed in here. I do have it listed. Now, sometimes there might be a space between Power and BI. If there is a space there, then it's not going to come up. So alternatively, rather than using the word Power BI, I can just do anything that contains BI. In this particular case, we would use yellow. So we go down to custom format. We're going to use a yellow as our background uh, color here. We'll go over to the font. Our font should be kind of like a kind of uh, I'd say a gold color, but I'm going to use black because I do think that black is probably going to be the best. I'll select automatic. We'll click OK. And now we have Power BI also selected. So this is how you'd work with text, right? You'll allow you to highlight text based on certain things. You could also go down lots of different avenues with this as well. And of course, I'm just going to show you a few different things that you can do as well. We're going to come back over to the number side rather than using formatting like uh, that you have currently here. If I go ahead and just paste this over, what we can do is we can come over to highlight these cells that already got formatting on them, go to the Home tab, go to Conditional Formatting, and we can clear rules from the selected cells. If I clear them from here, we have nothing on here at the moment. What we can now do is we can go over to Home tab, Conditional Formatting. This time we're going to highlight um, the cells. Actually, we're going to use um, data bars. So data bars are really quite handy ones, uh, or color scales, either 
either of these are really good options. From here, you can actually go ahead and select how you might want this to look based on the scores. This is dynamic, so it takes the lowest score and the highest score and kind of pits it against it. And you can see how that would kind of look. You could use red, green, blue, yellow, and so forth. And you can kind of see how those scores are measuring on a cell like this. You've also got the color scales. Color scales basically put reds at your lower side of the scoring system and green at the higher side of the system. So this is a great way to kind of do this. You can also flip that around so that red is your highest, green is your lowest, although that wouldn't be uh, very, wouldn't make a lot of sense. You could remove the yellow and just have the reds and the greens. There's lots of different ways of kind of looking at this in terms of scaling it out and all of that kind of good stuff. So that's another really good option specifically for when you're using numbers. The other thing that you can do is you can do diagonal um, or directional arrows, basically, you know, scores up, scores down, sideways. And um, you've got lots of different ways of doing that. You've got uh, smaller arrows, larger arrows. You've also got dots. So you can have a red dot for anyone who has failed green dots for anyone who has passed and a yellow dot maybe for people who've only just barely made it right you've got the traffic lighting system as well in here and there's a lot of different things that you can do you've even got you know the ability to use ticks explanation points and crosses so you can see that people have barely made it past you've got green tick to say that they have passed or even red crosses when they have failed okay you've even got a starring system here as well so there's lots of different options that you can use when trying to actually uh, use numbers in conditional formatting. You could also come down to a new rule and this gives you a lot more flexibility. This allows you to even use a formula within your conditional formatting, which is super, super helpful if you're using something like an if statement or ifs or count ifs and things like that. You, some ifs maybe. You could basically use a formula to, to ascertain whether a cell should be highlighted or not. This is super, super powerful. I use this one all the time. I won't go through the ins and the outs of this in today's video because I think it's quite a complicated one that will probably need its own dedicated video to kind of work you work you all through how to do that so if you are interested in how to use a formula within your conditional formatting let me know in the comment section down below but that's a brief introduction to um, everything to do with kind of you know uh, conditional formatting within Microsoft Excel if you found it useful and informative smash that like button if you are new to the channel subscribe and if you haven't done so you might want to check that video out right there. It's one you probably don't want to miss.